Well, welcome to this great easy, easy tutorial. I call it Bing. This is one that is nice and easy, somewhat repetitive as you're going to do both of the cherries the same way. Um, you're going to be using a few different brushes. Of course, our big two inch flat. You're going to be using a number 10 round, a number four round. You're gonna use a number two round and your rigger you're also going to be using a wisp brush or you can use a fan brush. The colors that we're going to be using, lots of colors, but really just little bits of each. And you'll be using your salt. We'll be using Cad Red. We'll be using um, either some Gamboge Yellow or if you don't have Gamboge, you can use Yellow Ochre. We're going to be using lemon yellow. We're going to be using alizarin crimson. That's going to be mixed with your cad red for your cherry color. We're going to be using just a little bit of sap green and that sap green will be going into the stems as well as burnt umber in the stem and a little bit of burnt sienna in the actual cherry. We'll also be using our black and a little bit of indigo. The indigo is more up to you if you want to use the indigo mixed with your black, but that's um, a preference, whatever you'd like to do with that one. We're going to be starting with the background. We want to mix a nice big puddle of our watered down black and some indigo. Um, and you can see that it's pretty watered down because the initial wash is going to be light so that we can get darker as we go on some parts of the painting. You don't want to be dark everywhere. And if you look at your picture, you'll see that there's the different values of the black or the black mixed with some indigo. We're going around the cherries and this is going to be the entire picture around the cherries. Um, so mix yourself a nice big puddle so that you don't have to stop and try to mix the exact same color and it won't start to dry on you so that you wanna make sure that you have a nice big puddle mixed. You're not gonna be wasting it. You'll be using it quite often. So, um, and the amount of paint that you're mixing is so minimal that you're really not wasting anything. So mix a nice big puddle so that you can just keep re-dipping into your puddle and not back into your water and your paint. I'm gonna throw on a little bit of salt in my background. I am not salting the entire background. I'm picking areas where I want to show the most texture in the towel that the cherries are sitting on. So I'm just being a little bit picky with where my salting goes. Dry it really well, brush your salt off, and then the upper left corner, you can see where the towel is starting to go into more shadow. So I'm going to put another wash on the towel in that upper left corner. Same thing, watered down black, watered down black and indigo, your preference, using my nice big brush, 
and just putting on another wash of color. Nice and wet so that it doesn't dry. I don't want streaks in it. I want just a nice, smooth, even color. And looking at your picture now, we want to separate out that little hem all along the towel. So I am just putting a wash of that same color on with my smaller brush. I'm going to soften the edge with some water. I'm going to dry brush on the actual hem to show the, the roundness of the hem. So I'm going to dry brush in an arch fashion. And then I am going to soften that edge with a little bit of water in that corner. The other edge that's going to be going down the hem, I'm not going to soften it with water. I'm going to actually just dry brush that edge off. So I'm going to arch it up to the left over the hem, but then I will just give it a nice dry brushed edge with um, my brush. The corner I'm softening. I'm not dry brushing that edge off. But the other edge coming down the side of the hem, I'm just going to dry brush that.
You can throw on a little bit of extra salt for some texturing and you can dry as you go. Now I'm going to be using my Wisp brush to start to put in some of the fabric texture. And I'm going to be going in two directions, obviously, so that I can create a weaved effect. You don't have to do the entire towel. You can do it just in sections if you would prefer or you can do just the front of the painting if you'd like, but um, you do want to continue it uh, across the towel, at least in some parts, because you don't want to just have it end, you know, halfway. So you decide where you would like to show most of your texturing, and just using a wisp or a fan, you can use a fan brush also, this is watered down. You don't want it to be too dark because you just want to give like the essence of that texturing. So you don't want your eye to be drawn to that. You want, you want it to be more of something that you're looking for. Both directions. And then you want to dry that really well. Now I'm gonna paint in my stems. I'm going to start with sap green, but I'm going to have my yellow ochre ready because I wanna drop in some yellow ochre, especially to the base of the stems. Make that just a little bit lighter than the actual green. I'm also going to be putting in some of my burnt umber color. So I'm starting with my sap, I'll drop in a little bit of the yellow ochre at the base of the stem, paint the rest of the stem with my sap, and then I will drag through some burnt umber mixed with some black. I want it to be dark. I don't want to have to go over these stems too many times because they're so small and I don't want to take the chance of widening them by having to put so many washes on. So I'm going ahead and mix my umber with a little bit of black, and then I'm just going to go up the side of my stem with that color while it's wet. You want to do it while it's wet so that it has that nice soft blend and it can blend by itself. I'm doing the left stem in sections because it was a, like a broken stem. That just adds to the interest of this um, this little cherry picture. And I'm doing the same thing, sap and then dropping in some of the black umber color. Will be the same thing for the other side, the other stem. And I'm going to paint the little connector piece separately because I want that to be a little bit lighter in color. I'll be using more of the yellow ochre up there versus the green, the sap green. I also want to keep that separate because I want a dry brush on that connector section to make it look really rough.
So my connector section, I'm going to dry brush first with a little bit of um, black. I want to make sure that it's not real thick. So dab your brush off on a paper towel before you start the dry brushing. And I just want to give it a circular motion with my brush to make that connector piece look rounded. I'll add in a little bit of, you know, black where it's more solid. And then I'm going to just leave that dry before I put the rest of my coloring on. Most of my coloring will be, uh, you know, yellow ochre, a little bit of the, the sap, but I will put the same black and umber color in. Now for the cherries. You want to wet your cherry first. If you look at your picture, you can see on both cherries, there's a section that looks like it has the burnt sienna color to it. It's not that the cherry is starting to spoil. That's just the coloring in the skin of the cherry. So you want to wet that first. I'm putting in a little bit of umber, but I'm also mixing in that sienna the warm brown color and it's mainly on the left side of the cherry but then it goes around the front of the cherry too in a real uneven section that's why I wet it so that it would have a softer blend to it it's not a not hard lines it's soft and so I wanted to keep it soft by allowing it to bleed into the wetness of just the plain water you want to do both cherries separately. I blotted the one on the left a little bit just to make that brown color be real uneven. But if you don't want to, if you'd rather throw a little bit of salt on there, you could do that also. You're going to do both of the cherries the same, but you want to make sure that the left one is dry before you do the right one or vice versa so that you don't have the bleeding of colors go from cherry to cherry. While you're waiting for one to dry, I'm going to go up and paint in that little connector piece um, and that connector piece I'll be painting in as I said with a little bit of sap a little bit of that umber black mix it's not going to be real dark at first it's going to be on the lighter side and I'll do my shadowing you know after but you can go up and go ahead and do that little connector piece while you're waiting for your cherry to dry or if you're impatient like I am, you can dry it with a hairdryer. Second cherry will be done just the same as the first. Just look at your picture. You'll be adding that um, sienna brown color into the water on this second one also. Goes around the front of the cherry and up the left side of the cherry. Allow it to dry well. And then we're going to go back to our background. I'm going to be putting in a little bit of dry brushing again to show um, some of the uh, little bumps and, and um, shaping of the towel. So I am using the same arched kind of um, dry brush to show a little roundness in that towel and then I'm going to move to there's a little um, 
It's like a little hook on the towel. It's a little cloth hook that you would hang the towel with. So I'm gonna go to that afterwards and I'm gonna be painting it in and shadowing it to show the little hook, the little, it's like almost like a potholder hook on the towel. And I'm just doing that with black. Refer to your picture. You will see exactly where the black parts are, the shadowed parts are, and you're going to soften the edges with water. It just looks like a U, an upside down U, and you will soften the edges with water. It's just black. Follow your picture, it'll make it easy for you. This is the inside of that little connector piece, so it's nice and shadowed. I'm softening it with some water. And then of course I have to dry that before I would go to the outside piece. So you wanna make sure the outside piece doesn't bleed into the inside piece. You're gonna leave a little tiny non-painted edge, very slight, and then you'll put in your outside black. That little tiny outside edge that I did not paint was more of a um, light catcher area of that hook part. It wasn't shadowed because that's where the light is hitting it. So if you forget to do that, you can always put that in with your white at the end. Some more shadowing, um, and again, if you just look at your picture, a lot of this you'll just see with your picture, but you can certainly follow the video. Watch the video ahead a couple minutes and then you'll know what's coming, um, and then you can back it up and go ahead and do it. But that's probably the easiest way to follow the videos. So I'm putting in some shadowed areas where, you know, one hemline or fold in the towel overlaps another painting it in with my black as a hard line, but then softening the edges. Some edges get softened on both sides, upper and lower. Some are just softened on the lower edge.
Now I'm going to go back in and really deepen that upper left corner. That really needs to be much darker. So I am putting on another wash. This wash is darker now. Not crazy dark, but it's much darker than, of course, what's already there. It's the same thing, watered down black, or you can do watered down black and indigo, whatever your preference is. You want to make sure that it's nice and wet so you don't get hard lines. You want to make sure that you get it on uh, relatively quickly before anything would dry. And then I always lift my paper, move it around so that I allow that um, nice wet paint to flow in all directions and that kind of evens itself out then. Make sure you wipe your table so that you don't get any wash back. Allow it to move in all directions before you lay it back down and then you can dry it. Now I'm going in back to my towel area and if you, you know, look at your picture, follow your picture, there is that uh, darker area, uh, kind of like a semi-shadow along the um, middle of the towel. It runs parallel to the dark shadow, but it's not quite as dark. And I am having a rough edge on those. It's not a smooth edge because the shadow is kind of being picked up by the fibers, the, the texturing in the towel. So if you look at your picture, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's not a smooth, smooth edge. So you can either paint it as like unsmooth or you can just dry brush, brush off the edge, that's up to you. It's not as dark as that upper left corner, but it's going to be darker, uh, you know, than the towel color. And you're gonna do that the whole way across to the left and to the right. The shadow on the right will get softened with water. The shadow on the left, um, I, I softened it with water initially, but then I'm going to dry brush the edge off. You'll see in the video exactly what I do because I don't want the lines to be too hard, although I want them to kind of pick pick up the texture of the towel so that your your eye sees that this towel is has a heavy texture, a heavy weave to it.
dry everything really well. And then we're gonna follow the picture. Now I'm taking those hemmed parts of my towel, giving them another wash of color because I want my coloring in this picture to be lower right, lightest, midway, a little less light, upper left, darkest. Same as the picture. So I'm following my picture and painting in those hems, different values of shadowing, and you're just following your picture for that. We will put another heavier wash on that triangle, that upper left triangle, but I want to make sure that I get my different values of color in and I will deepen as necessary. One last wash of color in that upper left corner. And you might be wondering why I'm doing so many washes. Why not just do one really dark wash um, at the beginning and be done with it? I'm doing it in layers because I'm doing my other shadows in layers. And I don't want the difference to be so intense between, you know, that upper corner and maybe my hem colors. So if I have to do additional washes to kind of have a nice even uh, deepening, then I would rather do that than have it too dark and then have it really look out of place. Um, again, that's my personal preference, but that's my suggestion too to you to do it um, in washes. Now for those great cherries. We're gonna be using the yellows, the crimsons, and the reds. I'm starting off with my uh, gamboge yellow, and I've had, I mixed that with just a little bit of the um, the regular lemon yellow or your cadmium yellow. And I'm painting the whole front of my cherry with that color. Nice and bright. And right over my browns, this is going right over the browns, nice and wet because I'm gonna be adding my yellows and my pinks and I want them to be able to move within that color so I don't want it to be drying on me. My back of my cherry, I'm starting with my crimsons and I'm going to be adding in the cad red to change up that color. I don't want it to be just pink. So I'll add in some cadmium red right in over the yellows and then you're gonna get that nice soft blend of color because my yellow is still wet. But I want that yellow to remain at least partially in the front of my cherry for now. I don't want it to turn all red right off the bat. I will add it as I need it, but I want to keep some of that nice yellow color. Filling in the back of my cherry. I'm still really nice and wet so that when I put my colors on, they're gonna go ahead and be able to blend in the wetness of the other color. Adding just a little bit more pigment. I'm 
and I don't want that section of the cherry to be quite as dark. I want it to be more of a real pale, pale peachy color almost. So I am just adding a little bit of pigment up there to the yellow that's already there. And then I can easily still add my colors in and let them bleed around because my cherry is still really wet. I want it to remain really wet. I'm adding in a little bit of my burnt umber because I was losing that brown color. So I'm adding in a little bit more and everything is still wet. So I'm getting a nice soft blend of color as long as you are nice and wet. If you are starting to dry or if you are drying, then you want to let it dry and repeat the process either just with plain water or with real pale color. But don't try to put it on if it's starting to dry and then softening it with water because you'll get a big wash back if your coloring is not totally dry or really wet. You don't want that to happen. So once you get your colors on and you get them to be where you want them and you like what you have, you have to like what you have. Don't be hard on yourself. Then you want to let it soften itself. You can turn your paper, move it around a little bit, allow it to soften itself, allow the edges to soften, and then you're gonna dry it. Dry it really well. I just went ahead and used the hair dryer to dry it because I was anxious to get to my other one. But go ahead and dry it and let it, uh, let it dry really well before you do your other one. And you're gonna be doing your other one exactly the same. Do it exactly the same as your first cherry, nice and wet. I put my water on, I put my yellow on, I put my pinks on, my alizarins on, then put in my reds where I needed it. If you need additional brown, put it in. As long as you're nice and wet, you can keep adding different color, more intense color, but you wanna make sure that you are still nice and wet. It's much better to be really wet than to have it start drying on you. You can always dry it, but to re-wet it, you are, you know, really, um, you know, pushing it that you're going to get a wash back. You don't want to take that chance of a wash back, not on something like this.
Now, once your cherries are done and you are happy with them, then you want to dry them really well. When they're dry and you feel you might need to go back into them, wait for a couple hours, make sure it's really dry, and then you can go back in and add some additional colors. I'm going to re-wisp some of my weave just in a couple areas to make it a little bit darker, not the whole thing. And then I'm going to work on my shadows. Do not put your shadows in until you are totally happy with your cherries. If you need to go back in and add some more color, if you want to make some of your pinks more intense or whatever, you don't have to re-wet the entire cherry again. You can put your color in and go ahead and wet the edges. As long as you've allowed it to really, really dry, you should be able to do that. Your shadows, a nice black color. Not super intense like jet black, but you want them to be pretty dark because you don't want them to not be as dark as the shadowing in your upper left corner. So you want them to be pretty dark. I made the edge of my shadow on the towel kind of go into the texturing and the weave of the towel. So it doesn't have a totally smooth edge. I kind of pulled it off into some of those little fibers. And if you look at your picture, you'll see what I'm talking about. Or if you look at my finished um, painting, you'll see what I'm talking about. But you wanna make your shadows nice and intense, nice and smooth around the cherry, but then going down into the fibers here and there on your towel. You want to do both of those cherry shadows at the same time because you do not want a hard line in between each cherry shadow. You want to do the whole shadow as one entity. Dry it super duper well, and then you want to shadow your cherries. Now, we can shadow the cherries separately. That would be a smart idea to try to do that separately. Don't try to get them both done at the same time. Your cherries have to be really dry so that you can wet the edge of where your shadow is going to meet. If your cherries are not really dry, I'd even wait till the next day. If they're not really dry, you run the risk of a wash back. So make sure they're really dry. I wet the upper section of the cherry so that I could put my nice wash of shadow on the lower section and bring it up to where the water is so that I have that nice soft edging with my shadow. You do not want a hard edge on your shadow, so you wanna wet that whole upper section of your cherry. It's okay if you wet it farther down. It's better to have it farther down than have it too far up and you're having to bring your shadow way far up 
farther than you should. Um, so you, it's okay to lower where you wet your shadow farther down the cherry, but you're bringing that shadow now up into the wet part of your cherry. You're gonna do that on both cherries. One has to be dry before you do the other one, but you need that shadow to show the shaping of your cherry. Otherwise, you have no dimension to that cherry. When that one is dry, then you can go ahead and do the other one. Make sure you get a little bit of a shadow in the butt crack of the cherry because you want to give that cherry a shape and show where the two sections have connected. Okay. The second cherry has a hard line where that stem is over um, laying the actual cherry. So on the left side of the stem, you're going to have a hard line that is going to show you where that cherry stem is overlaying the cherry and casting a hard shadow. I just softened the very edge of it, but there's a hard shadow on the cherry from the stem on the left-hand side. Once you put that shadow on, then you can dry that and go ahead and wet the top of the cherry and do the same thing, shadow the lower portion of the cherry and bring that shadowing up into your water, your wetness. Both cherries have to be dry before you do the stems. When I shadowed the stems, I left the right side of the stem on the right stem unshadowed. A real thin strip of the actual color of the stem. And um, I did that because that was where the light was hitting the stem so it wouldn't be totally shadowed. The stem on the left can be totally shadowed. And the connector piece 
follow your picture for that shadowing because there are some sections of that connector piece that are not shadowed. It's where the light is hitting and it's where the highlighting is going to go. So you wanna be careful with that, that you just don't shadow in the whole thing. You need to be happy with your shadows before you put on your highlights. Your highlights will go on with Chinese white and follow your picture. You can see exactly where those highlights are. On the connector piece, there's some real thin lines of highlighting on the top and on the right hand side. A little bit on where the stem is broken on that left stem and then along the tops of the cherries they have a nice light reflection on them. Just follow your picture. You're going to dry brush in a circular area along the tops of the cherries. Some of your highlighting will be done um, a little bit uh, uh, in, in some dampness of the other white. Some of it will be softened around the edge some will have a hard edge to it. So you just wanna follow your picture. You wanna make sure that when you're putting on your highlights that you put them on intense because you know the Chinese white, when it dries, it dries almost invisible unless you are intense enough. So you wanna make sure that you get it on nice and intense so that when it dries, you can see it and you don't have to redo it. Along the right edge of the right cherry, where that light is hitting, I put a line of my Chinese white and I will soften the edge with water. And once I have my highlighting on, I can move to the other cherry. You can always add additional highlighting. So it's not, it's not that important that you get it all done, you know, because you can go back and add some highlighting. Less highlighting is better because you can always add to it. You cannot take your white off. It's very difficult to do. So I would do a little bit at a time until you get it exactly how you want it. That way there's you know, no mistake and you don't have to worry about trying to lift off white because to lift off white, you're gonna lift off color. So you wanna make sure that you, you get it just where you want it. Less is better. The left-hand cherry, again, there's some nice white along the edge and softened. It's not quite as intense it's a little bit less intense than the cherry highlighting <clears throat> on the right, but just follow your picture. You will get that highlighting exactly where it needs to be. Edges are softened and you can always add.
love this picture. Wait for it. Bada bing. Happy painting. Hope you liked it.